so as you were just told, my name is Melissa Johnson, and I am a grad student at the University of Ottawa. Um, and so, I am actually as the lifelong title. I normally show it to, I'm looking at how templates can help in the recall of noisy items. So, quick thing what we're going to be doing. Of course, I have to tell you why we're doing this. Um, I'm going to give you a quick background on uh, no network on the BAM, no network. I'm doing it very quick because normally I talk to people who know absolutely nothing about no networks. I'm hopeful that this group probably knows more and some of you probably know more than I do. Uh, so we'll probably go quickly over that. I'll talk about what I actually did, how I did it, what my results were, and what I think this means and where I'm going to go from here. So first of all, noisy recall is recognizing items that we don't necessarily know everything about. Humans are really good at this. We can actually take an item, and as it slowly appears, you can figure out what it is. Humans can do this a lot better than computers. Computers have issues recognizing items without the full item. Uh, neural networks have been a huge help in this, but it's still a necessary skill. And if we're going to have these robotics growing up in the world, they're going to have to have this skill as well. They're going to have to be able to see objects and go, I know what that is, even if it's not fully clear, um, or, for example, having you know, a robot try to talk to me might be an issue. I don't talk like a normal English-Canadian person talks. I have a lovely, lovely little accent that's very hard to place. <laughs> we need to be able to deal with this noisy recall. So, um, basic things we've known. We use templates a lot. This is very common. And I'm not going to fight that. I'm going to look at saying what way can we use these templates to best improve this noisy recall. And I'm going to look at using templates using the bidirectional associated memory, BAM. Um, basic architecture of what the BAM is is bidirectional. So you have item one can be associated with item two. You give it item one, it should give you back item two. Uh, basic example, if I give it a big A and I have it associated with a little A, I want to get the little A back. And I can do this for the while, the bed or whatever I'm looking at. Um, so as you can see, we have the one item. Uh, X connected to X1, connects to X, uh, Y1, and it goes back and forth. So we tend to have two weight matrices, V and W, and we have two objects. Uh, the transmission function, oh, I should also point out at the top of these, because I am going very quickly over this, and you might have questions about why we can do this transmission or learning rule. Uh, there is a lovely article at the top that you can look at that will give you all the answers. Um, rather than having me try to explain it and take it the whole time, because I don't know about you, but I'm a bit hungry, and I would like to go for supper. Um, so we have a transmission function. It is actually, uh, one of the reason we use this transmission function is less us use it for both recall and learning. Um, previous recall, previous transmission functions, you had uh, different learning from recall. It also has two nice stable fixed points that you can use. Um, you do have to make sure you adjust the delta that is between 0 and 0.5, otherwise you might get some nice chaotic parameters, but we can do that. Um, and next is the learning rule. We are doing a basic uh, adjusted heavy and learning. We don't go on for infinity. We do actually stop at 1 and uh, we let it, we let it, you know, eventually match out. It doesn't, you know, grow forever when we have a connection. Uh, but it's the basic heavy and linear rule, and if things match, it's all nice and happy, and the weight matrix will stay stable. So that was the really, really quick BAM architecture, uh, BAM uh, uh, no network, that's the word. So now, what did we actually do? Uh, well, I gave it some lovely input, and I said, well, how can we best make these inputs, make these noisy inputs that we're giving it, make give us the best recall. What's the optimal strategy? And I was looking actually at three stat strategies. Um, so A is just saying we don't have templates. We're just going to give it a nice clean object and it hopefully it'll recognize those objects. That's, that's our baseline comparison. Uh, B was what we call circular. And what is happening there is we're letting each item, each uh, noisy template that we're giving it, or example, and we're switching it to the next one. So it just works in a circular pattern. Uh, C is what we call linear, so we have one item associated with itself, and everything kind of points slowly to that item. And D is the multi to many, and there is actually a lovely error missing because the template does associate to itself, 
and everything also associates that one template. So technically, if there are no templates, no example of, it is all actually a auto associated, it all matches A. But since we get some example of in there, it does change. Um, I do want to point out that these are lovely lights. This doesn't mean that it's a visual system. This means that I am human and I like seeing things that make sense to me. Um, you can actually think of the black and white dots as being features or neurons firing or groups of neurons firing. It depends on the application you're doing. Um, when I expand this, as I'll talk about the future, I will probably not be using lovely little numbers. This is for the visual performance for your benefit. Um, so what I did, of course I ran through these simulations, I made different noise in the template, so I made different noise in the recall. I want to see if this, actually the noise in the recall was always 30%, and I want to see if the recall, the different patterns in the templates help. 30% um, recall noise is because we have found in previous studies that that was actually really hard for the BAMs to recall. Um, so hopefully it wouldn't give us a you know, top out of 100 or bottom out of zero recall. And what did we get? We actually got some lovely results. Uh, first of all, in learning, we find that the circular really took a lot longer than the others to learn, relatively speaking. Um, as we got more examples, it just got slower and slower. Well, the menu one actually stayed really nice and steady and actually beat out the auto, which was somewhat surprising to me. Uh, we think part of this is because uh, the head of associative is a lot slower than auto associative, so that's why the sequel, which is all, all the mixed associations, would take longer. We also just looked at, you know, can it be called, is it recalling? And we find out that, you know, yeah, it does after minimal tries. The maximum normally used in your network, I believe, is 200. Just because we get more than 200, people go, well, yeah, but you're going way slower than humans, so we don't care. Uh, so they are going to Now, looking at this, the numbers on the graph do seem fault but I did say they were. But looking at what range they had, they're actually quite close. You can think, when we were trying to learn, I gave it 1,500 tries. The longest one took about 30, uh, 27. So they're actually really quite close. So I thought, well, this is probably worth pursuing. Let's actually find out if it's improving the recall. So we went to the next, and I was looking at recall, and I'm looking at it in two different methods. I'm looking at saying, well, if I only change the exemplars by 2%, I think it has the only one pixel, so very little. And what if I change it by 14%, which I think was about four pixels of the 49. And in both cases, it actually looks like using the many, has a, many to one has a huge improvement. It is drastically better than just having no templates, the auto associated, the blue line. Uh, now, the one pixel, the one foot pixel, 2%, is, you know, a nice steady improvement from all the others. When we get to the 14%, uh, they're actually getting com competing together. There is actually some debate. But then the more examples, in both cases, we notice that they're not handling it. The, multi -to -many, the many to one can handle multiple, many examples much better than the other options. So, one of the things, though, that you have to work with the neural networks is memory load. You get too many items, the way matrix this goes, I can't deal with this, the transmission function is, yeah, I know what's going on. You get too much, the, you don't get a good recall. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, making these adjustments weren't just for the results weren't just because we're changing the memory load, even though it's being held constant for height for the simulation. So I'm just comparing steady memory load across all of them, but I'm adjusting how many items and uh, templates there were. And it still looks like we're getting the results. We are still getting that the auto really doesn't like it. And as you have maximum memory load at 0 0.9 cent, the auto association is actually doing really bad. But we're getting the many to one, and actually the circular is doing quite nicely. The other interesting thing, though, is that the linear seems to be very um, susceptible to how many items are in the exemplars, in the uh, categories that we're using. So what does this actually mean? I thought it would be really quick. Ah, uh, well, it, we obviously know examples help. I don't think anyone's going to fight that. I don't think no one's going to you know, raise their hand and yell at me for that statement. Um, what exactly looks like the best the method appears to be many to one. Uh, it seems to outperform all of them. It's even a quicker method. 
Uh, before we look at linear, it looks good sometimes, but it's very susceptible to both the how many how different you have in the pixel changes, and it's also very susceptible to how many items you have. The search look, looks promising in some cases. I'm actually I want to look at them in more in depth because in some cases it does well, in some cases it seems to fall down, and I would like to know why. And as I said, many to one, it just seems to be a nice, steady, good improvement. So uh, this seems like a very basic study, I'm sure to everyone here, and it is because it is. Um, we want to see, is this worth pursuing? And I think that we do have a couple more things we should be looking at in this. For one thing, um, seven by seven uh, matrix, 29 items, is not very good, and just not really show a good mimic of you know anything we're going to actually be doing in uh, the uh, general intelligence field. So we should try to increase this, make sure it is you know following through with larger uh, inputs. Uh, we also I'm curious about what is making the example loss different. Um, why are some of them working and some of them not? And one of the things we're doing for this is a type of reinforce where we only you know, learn what doesn't work and see if that improves. And we actually did a quick thing for that, but we won't get into that because, you know, we have to have something to read later on. Um, and really, that is a very quick, short presentation because it is uh, almost 7 p.m. And uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.